Hello and welcome to Matt's Beamer. Today's video is of me showing you around this 2013 Mark 7 Golf 1.2 TSI fitted with the Blue Motion technology in the S trim. When I arrived at the airport in Cyprus, I was pleasantly surprised that the Renault Megane I was expecting to pick up was actually in fact a Volkswagen Golf Mark 7. You should have seen my face. Anyway, I loaded up the car and headed towards Paphos with two large suitcases, three big bags and my drone. I am glad that the seats folded down on this car. The first day I drove it, I actually believed it had a bigger engine, so when I found out it was only a 1.2 with 84 horsepower, I was quite surprised. The Mark 7 took over the Golf name from the Mark 6 in 2013. The Mark 6 Golf had the shortest production run of any Golf, as it was basically a Mark 5 which had been greatly improved. To my knowledge, the Golf is called the Golf in every country, like the old days when some places called it the Rabbit. It comes in either a 3 or 5 door hatchback, or a 5 door estate, and it shares the same MQB platform as the Mark III Audi A3, the Mark III Seat Leon, and the Mark III uh, Skoda Octavia. That was a bit of a tongue twister. Hey, so here we are. This is the Golf 1.2. TSI fitted with the Blue Motion. The year of this car is 2013, the Mark 7, and the colour is pure white. I just love this car very much. It's very economical. Okay, looking at the front of the car, we start with the biggest thing, which is the headlight. Very good in the dark, very bright. Going to the right we have the grill, black and chrome, and the big Volkswagen badge. Just down below, this car here has the front parking sensors and obviously the reversing sensors on the back, which link up to a television inside the car. This one here does not have the fog lights. What a lovely car. Down here we have the 15 inch hubcaps, standard on the Volkswagen range. This one is fitted with the 19565R15 tyres. Going up the car, we have the, the black wing mirrors with the indicators built into them, which is very nice. It also has the black door handles, which show it's a lower spec car. And the fuel cap, just there. One thing I like about the back of the car is the rear lights. Big red and clear against the pure white paintwork. Unfortunately, my shadow's in the way. There you are. Volkswagen Golf. There's the rear parking sensors. Fur brake light at the top. Kind of like a little mini spoiler it's built into. So, let's have a look inside the car. This is the key. Lock, unlock and boot release. It's a switchblade type. On this car it's got the um, self-closing windows if you hold the lock button. So. I'll just show you now. I'll hold down the lock button and in a second all the windows will go up. There you go. So I've locked the car. Silly me. So I have to keep moving the car because the sunlight and the shadows keep messing up my interior shots. Okay, let's open the car and look inside. Very sophisticated, very German, 
very practical. This one here is fitted with the um, the seat colour salt, which I think is the basic on this model. As if you look closer, to me it looks like salt. Okay, let's jump inside. So, let's start her up. She's in neutral, the handbrake's on. Very strange. Um, fixing the clutch to help you start the car. Here's the key, it's hard to see where I'm going. I'm in the hole, there you go. So, here we are. I don't want to ever hard because obviously she is still cold. Okay, looking at the left of the car, this car has very soft plastic on the top above this line just here. Down below, it's all the hard type soft plastic. This one here has the metallic um, trim, which I think has been painted by Volkswagen. The four air vents, surrounded by chrome. I do love those little touches like that. Okay, here's the hazard switch, the airbag um, system, lets you know if the airbags are on or off, and lets you also know if there's someone in the passenger seat, which you'd obviously know about. Um, this controls if you want the, your individual vent on or off. This is the five inch multimedia system. I do like it. I should tell you more about that later, or if I can work out how to do this editing stuff, I should throw in a clip now. So, this is the 5 inch um, basic multimedia system with touchscreen in the Mark 7 Golf. Um, just so you know, I don't know every single feature in this car. This is the CD slot, this is for the AUX, this is the SD card so you can listen to your music that you saved from your computer or wherever. Um, this is the, um, this, well, let's turn it on first, this is the on switch. Oh, okay, this is the on switch, turn it on, there you go. Okay, so, I keep saying so, so much, so, so. Okay, this is the radio button, gives you all the information and um, stuff that you would normally have on the radio, like the storage for the radio stations. Um, AM, FM, this is just a list of the radio stations. This is so you can fine tune the radio station, like the old fashioned cars. The media button, which is already up. This lets you choose between um, CD, SD, AUX, etc. Um, this one here, this one I like, gives the information about the car. So, go to here. So I'm trying to do two things at once. So driving data, that tells you how you've been driving. So on this, well yesterday I did an average about 47.5 miles per gallon, which was very good considering I was driving up and down mountains all day. But it, it is usually a lot higher, like 60 miles per gallon. Um, this is the amount of time I've been driving it today. I've been idling today. Um, this is the amount of fuel left in the tank, the temperature outside, the sound is off, the time, when the car gets nearer to the fuel station, it means you're running low on fuel. Um, this is some settings, won't go into this too much, like controlling in the um, safety driving features, the tyres, parking and um, manoeuvring, sorry. So parking sensors, etc. 
lights, interior lights, exterior lights, uh, mirrors and wipers. So when you go into reverse, the wiper goes down, the mirror goes down, sorry. Open and closing, controls how you want to open and close the car. Multi-function display shows you what you want to be displayed on the entertainment system. Time and date, units like miles per hour, kilometers per hour. When the car is due for a service, setup. This is controlling the setup of the um, the monitor system, the um, screen and that. This is controlling the sound of the car. The sound system in this car is very nice, considering it's a basic sound system. A lot better than the old the older German stereos that used to get. <laughs> and this one, yep, is the eject button for ejecting the CD. Going down, we have the air conditioning system. This is the manual type with the um, swivel knobs. Hot, cold, six speed fans, which has one extra speed more than the gearbox. Um, this is the zones for controlling where you want the air in the cabin. Air conditioning, rear window. Um, this one recirculates the air and this just turns it off. Which reminds me, I'm actually getting quite hot in here now, so I should open the windows quickly. As you know, they're automatic. Okay, some storage here. My phone inside, so it's quite quite a big storage compartment. Okay, it has a five-speed manual, which is a pleasure to use. It, um, this one here turns off the start-stop technology, which is very strange to get. Is very well. It's quite unusual at first, but it's very useful. This one here is um, to control the reverse and, and parking sensors. Going down, aha, this is the um, handbrake and automatic handbrake, just holds you on a hill. That is another thing that I, that really, um, that I find very strange <laughs> because I'm used to the old Yank Up style. In the centre we have more storage, the um, power source for the 24 volt batteries, um, cup holders or storage and more storage in the back and more cup holders. Yeah so yeah, it's alright isn't it? Between the rev counter and speedo we have an information display just there. As you can see without me pointing, it, that's how many miles left in the tank. This little switch here, let's see if you can see it, aha there, that controls what's on in the center so this that's the amount of miles left in the tank there's um, a clock on the top the amount of miles I've done um, this week and at the very bottom the total mileage of the car sorry it's kilometers not miles um, that's how long the car's been running for 15 minutes because I've been moving it about a few times um, that's the speed I'm going which is zero obviously um, yes, that's the temperature outside, so it's quite cool at the moment, 16 degrees. We get very hot later. This is the miles per gallon of the car that you're doing. I've been averaging about 55. It depends on where I've been going. Um, up the hills yesterday, up the mountains, I was doing about 40 to the gallon, maybe 45. And when I was cruising to the other side of the island, um, I was doing about 60. 65 to the gallon, so it's very good in my opinion. So, the um, around the instrument clusters are lovely chrome rings. I love the red um, needles and the white background, white and black background. This one here resets the um, the trip. Yeah, this is the temperature of the um, water. This is the rev counter, obviously, the, um, the amount of fuel left in the tank, and the speedo in kilometers per hour. Um, okay, this is the indicators. Down, left, right. If you do, if you do a quick sort of like, boom, like that, it flashes three times like for when you're overtaking or don't want to put them on for longer than three ticks or tick tocks whatever you call them anyway the horn as people like hearing the horns 
very loud, which I like. Um, turn the wheel slightly for you. Right, this is the um, this is the indicate. This is the stalk for um, controlling the wipers and that front, back, um, speed, and also, as I said earlier, the um, trip computer. It's controlled by this bit here. The little button. I don't know if you can see it because it's there. You go this bit here. Okay, down here. We have the um, the adjustment height of the lights. Um, I leave the lights on so, um, like this, but yeah. Off, side lights, main lights. Pull them out for the fogs. Fogs on the rear. Okay. Anything else? Oh, little storage thing here. They can sit on the camera. There you go. Um, da -dum, da -dum. Yes, oh, up here we have the, must be the sensors. Um, some cars would have the um, sunglasses case here. This one doesn't, which is surprising as we're in Cyprus. Um, these ones here control the interior lights. Hey, you want them to work in that. Um, rear view mirror, standard, nothing special there. Right, go into the door. This controls the um, the mirrors. Left mirror, right mirror. To it right round, it heats the mirrors up, um, which is unusual for where I am as well, as it's a very hot place. Um, lock, unlock. Um, also, when you sit this car in reverse, it tilts down a little bit, which is a nice feature which I missed on the BM. Down here we have the um, automatic up and down windows. This one stops the power to the back. Have a little red reflector down there. Good sized storage compartment for keeping bottles in. Speakers, good stereo in this car. Um, that's for the bonnet. What's oh, a manual? Bit dirty in here, sorry. Um, this is controlling the seat going forward and backwards and height and recline just there. Okay. Back inside the car before I forget. Looking in the rear view mirror, if you put the um, indicators on, I don't know if you can see it, but you can see the um, indicators on there, which is quite nice. Uh, okay, I should quickly show you how to use the handbrake. It's very unusual. So, as my seatbelt is off, the handbrake seems to keep on for safety reasons. So, if I put it in first gear, I'm on private land, so it's okay. But right. the handbrake's on again, okay? <laughs> so, if I try and pull away, in theory, it won't let me move. But, if I put my seatbelt on, one second. Now, my seatbelt's on, first gear, try and pull away, and it lets, it lets me go, which is very cool. If I stop the car, the handbrake, I put it into neutral, the handbrake is back on again. Due to this button here, which is the automatic hold button, you can turn it off or on. I like leaving it on just in case. And when I've been driving and I come to a junction and stop the car, come to a standstill, put it into neutral, the car, um, it won't do it now because I haven't driven, the um, car will turn itself off and as soon as you put your foot back on the clutch, the car will start itself. I just, it's very, very um, strange at first if you've been driving old school cars, but it's, um, it's very handy to have, but I believe it would make drivers very lazy. Just so you know, the um, glove box in this car is quite big. That's where you keep your service manual. That's how I knew it was a 1.2, not a 1.4, because this car does feel quite nippy. Basically, the passenger side is the same. Just with less switches for you. Um, vanity mirrors, yep. Ooh. That nice Volkswagen clunk. Okay. So let's have a look in the back. In the back, there isn't much to the back of this car, but 
I'm six foot tall. I have my seat in my usual position and there's a nice bit of space. I've got loads of headroom, which is very cool. More room in here than the one series. I know that for sure. Um, there's the speaker, door handle down here. Oh yep, there's the um, rear window control. More storage, speaker, loads of speakers in here. Um, reflectors, so if you are at night time and you open the door, people will see you. This is the view you get from the back. Well, there you go. Very nice. This car's on about 64 kilometers, 64,000 kilometers, I believe. So it's it's um it's held together quite well. It's, as it's a rental car, so yeah. I should just show you how the um the seats work for folding down. One second, I get out. Okay, so to fold the seats down, sorry, there's some lights here. You push this in, so the red thing pops up, and you just fold it down. It's very, not much of a lip there, uh, but it folds down in the 60-40, um, sorry, yeah, 60-40 um, ratio. So yeah, the boot's quite big, it's a different view for it. Sorry about my rubbish in there. Okay, let's go to the back in the boot. So, put the seat back up. All you do is just lift it up and there you go. Okay, in the boot. You go to the, the Volkswagen logo and just push it in like the One Series. And I think that's something Alfa Romeo's had this as well. And yeah, so, right. You can fit a big suitcase in here. You can't fit two, obviously. Um, I have to fold the seats down for that. Up here you have the safety triangle and other safety stuff. Underneath the floor, sorry about this, we have oh, a spare wheel. So that's as much as I can think about right now to show you. But yeah, nice car, good quality, stands the test of time, hopefully. I don't think it will last as long as the old Mark IIs or Mark Ones, but we'll never know. If people look after the cars, cars will last forever anyway. Thank you very much. Please like and subscribe and share if you want to. <laughs> Thank you. Bye.